Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a poor man cheesesteak. Is ground beef better, equivalent, good, similar to a very, very good shaved ribeye cheesesteak? We're about to find out. So this is the deal. With prices as high as they are, I am actually surprised because I get a lot of comments. I wish I could get ribeyes for that cheap. Minor $21.99, minor this, minor that. Granted, we buy our ribeyes on sale. Not every single time, but we buy in bulk and then save throughout the year. We just got back off of vacation, and I love going to local grocery stores when I'm on vacation. One, my real job is inside of a grocery store doing something, so I always like to see what the competition is there, especially when it's regional. And two, I love looking at prices because I know what you guys are going through, which helps me relate. So there... In Boston, you can imagine lobsters were 50% the price than what they are here in East Tennessee. Think about it, right? The difference is their ribeye steaks were out of control expensive. And I'm thinking, good Lord, people. Well, here they're not that expensive. So it's basically like a balance. So when people say their budget's getting tight, what about a good cheap meal? What about a cheap meal, cheat and cheap? And then the idea came up, about these uh, poor man's cheat steaks, just using regular ground beef. We got the ground beef for $3.79. I think that's a fair price. You can buy it for cheaper or more expensive. Um, I'm using some tri-colored peppers because we're gonna use that in a video later. Some onions. I do not like provolone cheese. I, I mean, it's okay. It's just not my favorite, right? I don't grab it unless I really need it for something. So I got my aged Gouda because we did that uh, smoked prime rib cheese steak and I put the smoked gouda on it. Oh, tears to the eyes. Fantastic. And the cheese whiz because somebody said up in Philly that you can't have a cheese steak without cheese whiz. We're going to do two different kinds to see which one, which cheese we like better. Yes. And the ultimate thing is ground beef. Is it worth it? Is it worth your time? Is it worth your effort? Can it be just as good? We're about to find out. Let's go. We're using a Blackstone griddle today. As you can tell, we are smoking, which means we're hot. I'm going to cheat a little bit along with my cheat steak. I want to get that Maillard reaction. Finally learned how to say it. The point is, if you just take your ground beef, cook it all up on the flat top, and pull it off, you're not going to get a lot of flavor. The only thing we're adding today is salt, pepper, just a tad of Worcestershire sauce. Not bad. And then just leaving the beef the way it is, right? We want to keep it just as clean as we can to compare it with the ribeyes, all right? So what I'm gonna do is not touch it, right? Let each piece have that firm contact with the griddle. I'll show you that in a second. I'm only adding enough cheese whiz basically for half a sandwich. I'm just trying to eyeball it. I've got, what I'll say, I've got a quarter onion and basically just like, basically like a quarter, I'd say like a quarter of each color bell pepper. I'm just trying to mix the vegetables with the beef. We like the vegetables in the cheese steak, so. That's what we did. I'm looking for color, so I'm gonna just let that sit. I'm not chopping it up yet. I'm not doing anything. I just want that to develop that deep, beefy flavor that you get from the ribeye. We're just warming up the cheese sauce just until it's warm. Be careful, that thing gets hot. Just a little salt and pepper on the vegetables. Notice I'm still not cooking the ground beef. It's not a big deal, we can chop it. I wanna get that crust, so. Ooh. Let's see what happens here. You're still not touching the ground beef. I am now. You said I'm still not cooking the ground beef. 
Oh, what am I supposed to say? You're still not touching the ground beef. Thank you. That's what I meant. I let the ground beef stay on there because hopefully we get. Oh yeah, you see that? That's what I'm talking about. That right there is flavor that you cannot get just by regular ground beef. You gotta let it set. All right, that's perfect. That is. Mm. All right, with the ground beef, I've just allowed it to let it fry on its own fat. You guys can see that my yard reaction is still happening. Perfect. My charred onions, I like my onions charred, I'm just telling you. So I'm gonna mix it all together. I don't know, honey. That dang little brown mm. bits right there might be where it's at. Mm. I like a little W sauce. You guys do whatever you like to do. I'm not trying to change the flavor. A little bit goes a long way. Two of them. Let's see over here real quick. Cut the tips off that bread. Cut it right in half. Cut this in half. If you guys want to hollow, hollow out the bread, one, to add more meat, two, to watch your carbs, I would suggest that. We're just going to throw it on the grill real quick. I kind of like a, I don't know, more of a steam sometimes than toasted. All right. That aged Gouda right there. Remember your skillet, pot, whatever should be piped extremely hot. I'm gonna put just a little bit down here first. Oh yeah, just allow that bun to Trap that heat in, steam that cheese just a little bit. It also helps steam the bun, the griddles off. Woo! Be careful, that joke is hot. Now that is one mammer jammer. All right, now they've come off. I'm gonna take the, the rest of that cheese whiz. Woo! Just like that. Just like that. All right, guys, there you go. Super easy, incredibly fast. Uh, you could do this as a beginner, as a novice, as an expert, you name it. It's just ground beef. It's not the end of the world. The difference is putting the things in it that you like, banana peppers, jalapenos, mushrooms, squash, zucchini, I don't care what you put in it. Just put in it what you like. So now it's a taste test. I'm gonna go to the cheese whiz first just because I know in my heart that was not something that I would actually order. Mm. I'm just not a cheese whiz fan. It's not smoked gouda no this is aged gouda smoked gouda no this is aged gouda i want it to be known that this is about the fifth time that i've been right in the last two days and i haven't been right in 20 years you're slipping kid mmm 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 okay I hear you. I can understand the idea. Is it as good? Maybe, you know, I don't, ah, it's close. To me, it tastes more like a, like a chopped cheese or like a burger. You know, like you get that ground, but you don't get that ribeye flavor. I will say this on the cheese with I think the reason why I don't like the cheese with as much on a cheese steak is because I feel like it overpowers it. I don't know what you're thinking. Use less 
I don't think it's it. I think it like coats your mouth with the cheese, the processed stuff. But this, here, taste this. Here we go. Hurry up. Tom's ticking. Oh, that's a good bite too. Mm, that's good. Now that tastes clean, right? Like mm -hmm. you can almost taste the peppers, the onions, the ground beef sticks out a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Hurry up. Down the hatch it goes. Mm -hmm. Next. I just want it to be known that for all the people out there that give me <laughs> crap about my wife not getting bites. <laughs> trust he, me, she's he fed. feeds me well. Trust me, she's fed. Good. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna start, I'm, we're going to start filming that. <laughs> this one we called Amy's Bites. <laughs> do you feel the same way I feel? Mm-hmm. I do. It's not the fact that it's bad. It just overpowers so much. I do like the Gouda one better. So what do you think about the, the, the ground beef versus the ribeye? It's a very, very good Comparable. sandwich. Comparable. If you want to save 10 or 12 or 15 bucks. Anyways, there you go, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's just a way to help out the channel. We really appreciate it. Just by liking, subscribing, commenting, and going um, all that route helps us as well. Last but not least, if you haven't, check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook. It's where we get to connect one-on-one. -on -one. It's where you guys are going to show what you guys are making, the inspiration, back and forth, yada, yada. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button. Pound that notification button. I almost got through it. Share it with your friends. Peace. I'm going back to the Gouda. You can have a cheese whiz. Uh-uh, I want that one. Mmm. <laughs> oh, good. Look at that. Mmm.